Hey, good morning. This is Pastor Gary for this week's Wednesday Words. A uh, little different uh, format, a little, little different place than when we usually do Wednesday Word. Um, you know, the church is closed. Uh, the building is closed. Uh, there is power on and off. Uh, I'm sure a lot like you, you know, where you are right now. I mean, for, there are so many of us that, that are going having to deal with the rolling blackouts or, or just not having uh, any power um, and, or water or anything like that. So uh, no, we're praying for you. Uh, if, if there's anything that you need, please reach out to the church. Uh, you can always call. Uh, although we're not there, it, it does roll over to our emails. And so I know for me, I'm checking it checking on my email uh, throughout the day and I continue to you know reach out to, to those in, in, in the church body and I would encourage everyone to, to reach out to someone uh, you know whether you need help or you're offering help uh, reach out to someone uh, you know nobody should be alone in this uh, and, and so just uh, you know just be sure to, to make contact with somebody if you need help or if you know somebody that, that needs help let us know. Uh, if you're a part of the lift group, check on each other. Uh, if you're, you know, and, and, and again, just make sure that everybody's taken care of. Uh, it's time like these that we need comfort, uh, and that's kind of what I want to talk about today. You know, it's it's, you know, for many of us right now, this this comfort, this word comfort takes on a, a, a different meaning. You know, it's the it, it's great. It would be great to be comforted uh, by warmth of, from our electricity or water, uh, but that's not the comfort I'm talking about right now. It's it's it's. It's the kind of comfort that we receive when we go through trials and experiences and we experience struggles in our life. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a comfort that can only come from God. Uh, I want to go to 2 Corinthians. I want us to go to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1, verses 3 through 10. And before we get into God's word, uh, I just want to lift everybody up right now. Uh, and so let's pray. Father God. Father, I pray for, for everyone in, within our body and in our community, Father, and, and throughout Texas, Father. Father, I pray for safety, Father. I pray for those that are without power right now, Father. They find warmth in your word, Father. Father, I pray that, uh, Father, that they're, they're, that nobody is alone, Father, right now. Father, I pray, Father, for those that are without power or without water, Father. Father, I pray that just the electric companies can, can, can get whatever wrong working father so that people that haven't had power can get power father father i pray that you just put put that that burden on each of us father to reach out to somebody father father i pray for protection i pray for safety for the crews that are out there right now working on these lines father i pray for our first responders that are out there taking care of those that that aren't able to take care of themselves father father we just give you all of this father it's in jesus name we pray amen well, amen. Well, let's go to 2 Corinthians verses 1, uh, chapter 1, verses through 10. And, and this is God's word. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all of our in all our affliction, so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, so also our comfort is abundant through Christ. But if we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. Or if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which is effective in the patient enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. And our hope for you is firmly grounded, knowing that as you are sharer of our sufferings, so also you are sharers of our comfort. For we do not want you to be unaware, brethren, for our affliction which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened excessively beyond our strength, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, we need the set, we had the sentence of death within ourselves so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great of a peril of death that we will deliver for us and will deliver us. He on whom we had set our hope and he will yet deliver us. Let's look at verses three and four. And in verses three and four, and I'll read it again. It says, blessed be the God and father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of mercies and God of all comfort, 
and comforts us in all our afflictions, so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. See, God is the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. When we go through trials in our lives, God will comfort us in all afflictions. He is there and he will comfort us. I'm sure that we have there, there's been a time in our life where we've asked this question, God, why is this happening to me? I think one of the reasons we experience hardships in our lives is so that we can experience God's comfort. If we never experience trials or struggles in our lives, how can we experience God's mercy and grace? It is during these times of struggle that we find our strength in the comfort and mercy of God. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. On our own, we cannot endure persecution. On our, on our own, we cannot endure any afflictions. But through the power of Christ, we can endure the trials and tribulations that we go through in life. Who better to share this testimony of God's mercy and comfort than Paul? I'm sure Paul experienced hardships, not, but nothing like he experienced since, he, since coming to Christ. He was shipwrecked, stoned, snake bit, but Paul pressed on during these trials. He rested on God's promise to comfort him during times of affliction. We need to rest on God's promise as well uh, when we go through our trials. We need to rest on God's promises during these times. I think that another reason why we experience hardships in our lives is so that God can use us to comfort others when, when, when we are experiencing hardships. You know, look at verses 4 and 7. Verses four says, so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. And then verse seven says, and our hope for you is firmly grounded, knowing that as you are sharers of our sufferings, so also are you sharers of our comfort. So not only, you know, does God use us to comfort others who are experiencing these hardships? In that same vein, God is able to use others to comfort us during our times of hardships. It has been incredible to witness the outpouring of care and assistance that I have seen and witnessed within our church body and community. Within our church family, people are offering up their homes to brothers and sisters who do not have power. Here at the Spring Campus, people are opening up their doors you know, and, and inviting brothers and sisters in Christ to their house to share in the warmth of their homes, to, to, to share meals with, just to make sure that they're safe. Because nobody should be alone at this time, especially in a, in a home that has no power, has no water. On my community Facebook page, it's been incredible to, to read time and time again where people are offering their homes to complete strangers, their neighbors, yes, but also to complete strangers. To people who you know who do not have power, do not have water, to for a, a, a hot cup of coffee, for a hot meal, just to come in to get a hot shower. God uses us to comfort others, and He uses people to comfort us. We love to offer help. I know for me, I love to offer help, but I'm so reluctant to accept it. I need to stop thinking that way, you know. And, and for many times, I think I miss this. I miss that opportunity. I don't know if it's pride or not wanting to impose on people, but one thing that I realize is that when people offer help, I don't need to get in God's way uh, of using people to comfort me during the difficult time that I'm going through. Another reason why we experience hardships in our lives is so that we can at least partially identify with Jesus' sufferings. Look at verse 5. For just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, so also our comfort is abundant through Christ. Paul understood that we will suffer for the sake of Christ, but that we are given abundant comfort and sufficient grace. No matter what we may have to face, we have a peace that passes all understanding. When we fix our heart and mind on Christ, and, and Paul knew that the God of comfort is, is the supernatural comforter who comforts all his, during, all his children during difficult times. Like Paul, we need to come to a deep understanding that when we, become Christ, when we became Christians, we signed up. We will suffer for Christ's sake. It is through the suffering that we receive real strength, true joy, and a peace that passes all human comprehension. One last reason why we experience hardships in our lives is that it teaches us to trust God. Look at 2 Corinthians um, one nine. 
It says, indeed, we had the sentence of death within our within ourselves, so that we would not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. The Christian life is a life filled with hardships, but praise God that this life is temporal. For us that know Christ, this is not the worst. This is the worst of it. Our eternity is in heaven. Our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Jesus tells us in John 14, 1 through 3, do not, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you. For I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may also be. We should count a joy to go through trials. Let's go back to, to 2 Corinthians. And I want to look at 2 Corinthians 1, chapter, uh, chapter 1, verse 6. It says, but if we are afflicted, it is for your comfort and salvation. Or if we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which is effective in the patient enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer. Amen. So although we may not like our current situation, we praise God that we are not going through this alone. God is with us, comforted, comforting us each step of the way. Amen? Well, amen. Well, I, I just hope that you found comfort in this, that though we're going through these physical struggles and, and, and things that are beyond our control, it is temporal. Just like the power will come on, this life is temporal and we have eternity. We will be in eternity. We will be in heaven for all eternity with Christ. Times there'll be times of highs and lows, but we can't let our highs be too high and our lows be too low. Because again, this life is temporal. Our eternity is set in heaven. And so I pray that you found comfort in this, knowing that, you know, when people offer you help, allow them to, to allow them to do that for you because God is using them. For many times we miss this. I know I miss this. And boy, I praise God that I do go through struggles because it is during those times that I'm able to, to truly and fully experience his God comfort, God's mercy on my life because of his love for me and his love for each one of us. Amen. Amen. Well, let's pray. Father God, Father God, I thank you, Father. And I do kind of joy that to go through struggles, Father, because I know that you were there, Father. You, you were there, Father. And it is when, I, and it is when I am weak that you are strong, Father. And I know that I can't do anything without you, Father. Father, I thank you for just your grace and your mercy, Father. Father, again, I pray for those that are without right now, Father. I pray that you comfort them, Father, that you send people to comfort them, Father. Father, and I pray that you send me, Father, to comfort those that, that are going through things right now, Father. We thank you and love you for all that you do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen. Uh, don't forget to uh, just check on people. Uh, as of right now, we are still planning the distribution day uh, at the Magnolia campus for updates. Continue to check our Facebook page, check our website uh, regarding that event on Saturday. Um, and, and don't forget to be in church on Sunday. Uh, it's been a great uh, ser message uh, series that Pastor Joe's been preaching. Uh, I was, uh, I'm learning more and more each Sunday. And so I just Thank you. Uh, I, I just thank that uh, that I'm able to be in there and just continue. And God continue just to teach me and, and as I learn more and more uh, about Him. Uh, if you haven't uh, been to church or you haven't, you know, if, if you missed the Sunday, go definitely go back to YouTube or Facebook to catch up. Uh, can't wait to see you in church on Sunday. God bless.